<laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, can you hear me now? I just did a lot of talking about the deck. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you guys were just sitting here watching me. Let me actually adjust my window a little bit, too. That's funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely not a problem on your guys' end. It was just that I think I had a... Uh, I think I had like my mute button hit for the microphone. I pr I hit that because I wanted to hit the uh, just muting the system audio, but but okay, I hit the wrong button. So let me see. Now that I've resized this, um, you can't really see everything. So let me rearrange a little bit. There we go. All right. Now I think you guys should be able to see a little bit better what I'm doing. All right. So I started off uh, just talking tonight a little bit about deck lists. Um, Oko is gone. I'm sure all of you guys have I have heard about that by now. Uh, I was super excited about Oko at first. Uh, just uh, you know, these are these are kind of my colors. I've always been a green player before I even got into Merfolk. I was a, a big fan of things like elves. Uh, it just the color always spoke to me, like the Timmy side of me. I just wanted to play Crater Hoof Behemoth and just like run people over, um, get it out fast with with Lanawar elves stuff like that. And then I learned about Merfolk, uh, attacking with gigantic unblockable creatures was kind of amazing, and you can also just counter people's spells. So I would definitely describe myself as a green-blue mage. Uh, so Oko was really exciting. Uh, people, it took a little while to sort of warm up to him after he was spoiled, uh, after he was printed, but pretty rapidly people realized, you know, just how flexible and how powerful Oko was. And <laughs> I think a few too many people realized it, and... Uh, he caught the attention of wizards, and yeah, he, he ate it today. So um, I was able to sell all my Okos this morning. I jumped out of bed at the last second, and I remembered I needed to unload these things. I definitely lost a lot of money on Okos. I, I can say I guess I had a pretty relatively funnish experience with Oko while I was playing with him, so maybe that's worth something. Uh, but I was able to maybe get 50, 50 bucks or something by selling all my Okos. I definitely spent a lot more than that. It's kind of embarrassing, but at this point, they're tanking, so I was happy to unload them when I was able to. Uh, so those of you guys who, uh, who follow me with any kind of regularity uh, know that I've been a big fan of the Black Splash over the, you know, the last month or two. I was initially really hesitant to splash for what seemed like... An unnecessary reason, uh, just basically kind of an aggressive win condition uh, where I think the, the main plan of a Soul Herder deck should be to gradually build up at, um, value uh, and gradually improve your position against the opponent until it just gets to a point where you can just lean on them and just win the game. Uh, and Siege Rhino, something like this, a 4-5 Trampler, you know, has this um, Lightning Helix effect when it enters the battlefield. It seemed like maybe it just wasn't worth adding a four, fourth color when we already can have, you know, sort of awkward situations with a Bant mana base. Uh, but then I, I started thinking more about what black uh, opens up for us, and Assassin's Trophy is kind of a huge addition. It's a big reason to actually splash black at all. Uh, came to uh, seem to me to be actually more important than something like Siege Rhino. Uh, it just gives us a lot of answers against so many different decks. It can blow up Planeswalkers, Tron Lands, um, creatures, obviously. Uh, and when you start recurring something like Assassin's Trophy with Eternal Witness, it can just be super oppressive. Uh, so if so like Tron plays a Karn and we just Assassin's Trophy it, then we play an Eternal Witness next turn, get back Assassin's Trophy, blow up a Tron Land. Now they're just low on mana. Um, a lot of decks don't run a lot of basics, so at a certain point this has no drawback at all. Um, just destroy stuff. Uh, and then Unmoored Ego actually became more and more impressive to me as I played with it. Uh, against decks like Tron, you can name their Tron Lands. Against Primeval Titan decks, you can name Primeval Titan or Scapeshift or Valakit and just rip those cards out of the opponent's deck. Um, and with Noble Hierarch, we can do that on turn two. I've actually done that against Tron. Like, I think they were even on the play, and they had, like, Tron in hand, but I was able to name the Tron land that hadn't been played yet and just rip it out of their hand, and then they just had to play fair magic for the rest of the game, and it was... Uh, I, I won that. I won that game. So um, definitely a fan of Unmoored Ego, but um, I've sort of um, gravitated back towards um, Bant, in the last week or so because well one of the reasons is four colors can't run the full set of uh, force of negations just because we don't have as many blue spells 
Uh, so I've been on two in, in four colors, and, and it's sort of fine with the amount of blue spells to run two Force of Negations, but uh, it's a really powerful spell uh, for what it does. You know, it's definitely up there um, on the list of most powerful cards in modern, I'd say. Uh, so actually, it's Exile Clause. You know, some people uh, run Force of Negation actually in Legacy uh, because the Exile effect can be so strong uh, so that, you know, people won't be able to flash back their, their combo card. Um, since Force will just exile it. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the list that I'm going to play tonight. Um, it is... which one? I have too many too many lists. Spell Herder is what I'm calling it temporarily, I guess. So uh, too, many, too many different cards in these decks. I have to make more space. Um, there, I guess that's about the best I can do. All right, so the modern base hasn't changed in a while. Uh, three forests, two islands, two two plains. Uh, a lot of fetches just to help us get our colors uh, situated in the early part of the game. Fetches also synergize nicely with um, Eternal Witness. It gives us something to to grab out of the yard if we play like a Prismatic Vista into Hierarch, into a basic, and then play Eternal Witness on turn two. We just get a land back from the graveyard. It's sort of like drawing a card. It's it's particularly excellent if we are just like low on lands. Uh, you can go and grab one of those fetches in the early part of the game and keep hitting your land drops. Um, but the big things I want to talk about with this list uh, is the replacement, basically, for Oko. Uh, these three Teferis. It's not as flexible a card as Oko. Like, Oko was removal. Uh, it was a threat. Uh, and it was like you could just every now and then do the whole Threads of Disloyalty thing where you just steal one of the opponent's cards. Hey, Mateo, welcome to the stream tonight. Uh, good to see you here. So I was just saying that Teferi, um, Teferi's not as sort of at the same level as Oko with like sort of raw power, uh, but I, I frequently said, I think, that um, even while Oko is legal, that, that Teferi is just a more synergistic card for our deck. It just sort of fits smoother into our plan. Taking away the ability to interact at instant speed uh, from the opponent opens up so much stuff uh, for us, particularly uh, using Ephemerate sort of to its, its max. Uh, if the opponent can never um, cast removal in response to Ephemerate with Teferi on the board, we're going to pull out, like just pull way ahead pretty fast. Like if we have... Um, an Eternal Witness on board, and they try to Lightning Bolt it. We can Ephemerate it, and they can't respond to that. So it's going to blink the Eternal Witness. We'll get value off of that. And then uh, maybe they have a second removal spell, uh, and they end up killing the Eternal Witness. Uh, but we were able to at least sort of, in effect, counter the first removal spell, get value out of the Eternal Witness. And then, of course, we're going to always get the rebound on the Ephemerate because... Um, it, it resolved the first time. And I, I we typically get the rebound anyway in those situations, even if it got... Well, no, I'm sorry. If it gets countered or the creature gets removed, then we, of course, don't get the uh, rebound because it doesn't resolve in the first place. All right, anyhow. Uh, so Teferi works really, really well with Ephemerate. Um, it actually sort of surprisingly works well, sneaky, uh, with Winds of Abandon because this is a sorcery. We've got Teferi out and we tick him up. Uh, opponent just throws a bunch of creatures on the battlefield and then we can just wipe the board on their turn. Uh, it's a pretty powerful effect, but that's not something that comes up very often. Um, but Teferi sort of encourages us to play a lot of stuff at instant speed um, on the opponent's turn because uh, they can't really respond. So, um, you know, we can just do the draw step Vendillion click. It's never going to get countered against control. It's just going to resolve and probably take, a, take away their Planeswalker, take away their board wipe, whatever they have. Um, instant speed Venser can never get answered. It just does a lot uh, taking away that ability from the opponent to interact. Uh, like I played against a... Um, a Bant Planeswalker control deck this afternoon. They were still playing Oko because I guess the ban doesn't take effect until tomorrow. So they played Oko and Little Teferi and Big Teferi and Jace. And it was a really, really good match. Uh, if, you guys, um, if you guys want to see a, a quick replay of that Bant Planeswalkers match, you let me know in the chat because I'd be happy to just sort of click through it really fast for you guys. Maybe take uh, five or ten minutes and just sort of look at how that went. But it was playing this list. I got some sick action with uh, Spell Queller and Teferi. So I guess I might as well talk about that synergy for those of you guys who aren't really on top of it. Um, if opponents can't cast, if they can only cast spells um, when they can cast sorceries, um, 
if Spell Queller gets blinked by Ephemerate, normally it would put the spell that was underneath it back onto the stack. But since they're not allowed to do that, it just goes to exile, or stays in exile. So um, at any time you quell something with Teferi on the board, as long as Teferi sticks around, the opponent's never going to get to resolve that spell. Uh, so I just... Um, I countered some huge spells against this control deck. I countered... Sorry, I should say I, I quelled or I stole... Um, a cryptic command that was trying to bounce a, uh, a pithing needle that was naming Oko. Uh, so I ate that with the spell queller, and then after I ate it, they tried to cast a supreme verdict, and I ephemerated the spell queller, and that permanently exiled the cryptic command, and it put the supreme verdict underneath the spell queller. Eventually, the opponent, I, I think I uh, ephemerated again later to eat another supreme verdict. Um, and then eventually they did resolve a Supreme Verdict, but I, I sort of easily won the game. With Teferi on the board, they couldn't do anything. I, when I, I ended up clicking at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the game, opponent showed me their hand. They let the click resolve. And it was like two Monoliques, two Spell Snares, a Jace and an Oko. And I had a Pithing Needle naming Jace and a Pithing na Needle naming Oko. So literally six cards in their hand were all dead. Um, so that's kind of the power of what Teferi can do. Uh, I had been moving towards uh, having like three or four Teferis in the sideboard as like a really hardcore answer to like any control decks because it just shuts them down. Like half their draws are going to be dead when they start ripping counter spells. Uh, so yeah, that's a sweet interaction uh, between Spell Queller and Teferi. Uh, the plan with this deck now, um, adding in those two spells, is it really sort of um, squares off our curve around that three drop level. So... Um, the uh, the ramp becomes that much more important in the in the on turn one. If we can stick a noble hierarch or um, the fifth monodork here with a single bird's paradise, play our second land drop on turn two. We're going to be able to play any of these three drops, which are all pretty powerful options. Uh, you get a soul herder down on turn two. It's not necessarily like the most powerful spell, but it is a three mana worth of of card hitting the battlefield. If the opponent doesn't answer it next turn, we can play basically anything. If we have a third land. We're going to have four mana on turn three. You can start bouncing their lands as early as turn three repeatedly uh, since you're going to get to Soul Herder at the end of the turn. So imagine you're on the play. Uh, on turn three, you play uh, Venser. Uh, the opponent has only played two lands. You bounce one of their lands with Venser. You go to the end step. Uh, Soul Herder blinks Venser. You bounce their other land. Now they're on zero lands. So uh, ramp, ramp is pretty important, and even Soul Herder on turn two is strong. The weakest turn three play, uh, sorry, turn two, three mana play is probably Witness, because at that point you're only going to get back at most um, like a fetch land from the graveyard. But uh, even getting back a fetch land, it's still an extra card in your hand. And, <clears throat> excuse me, getting a Witness on the board just it gives you a nice target to ephemerate the next turn. Or if you draw into a Soul Herder, you'll already have something good to blink established on the board. Uh, you can see I've gone down to two Soul Herders. Um, that's, that third Soul Herder was replaced by this Singleton Click. I just felt like having an extra strong option um, at instant speed, again, working really uh, well with Teferi, in the deck just seemed like a, a good way to go. Up with the, uh, the full four forces, I was mentioning that was a drawback of going uh, four colors with black, is that uh, you can't run the full playset, and I am... Running all four. Uh, Deep Forest Hermit is my finisher in this list. <clears throat> I was kind of reluctant to, um, to try this card at first. It just kind of seemed a little bit silly. But once I started playing with it, um, I, I don't want to say like it was just immediately astonishing and I was blown away and all this stuff. I mean, it was, it was obviously powerful. <clears throat> but what it, it did more than anything was it just made me think a little bit more about the card like and why we might want to include it. <clears throat> so I, I got to the point where I was just comparing it with Thragtusk, which a lot of people just say, or just assume that is um, you know, sort of a mega slam dunk in, in any kind of blink deck, right? It gains a bunch of life, it makes a 3-3 beast, like how could you possibly do better for 5 mana than Thragtusk? And <clears throat> the Hermit just lines up a little bit better, uh, because... You're getting 8 power across squirrels, uh, which, which sort of already just matches Thragtusk's 5 plus the, the beast. Uh, but if you can blink this thing once, it just starts getting out of hand. Uh, because 4 two twos becomes 8 two twos. If you ephemerate and resolve a rebound, you're getting the effect 3 times. So 
12 tutus. So between uh, the hermit and the, and the squirrels, you're talking about 25 power across 13 bodies. So uh, the, the, the hermit just seems to sort of be a, a natural choice uh, to, to top out uh, sort of a, bant, a bant list like this. Uh, I did try it in four colors as well, and it just seemed redundant with... Um, with the Siege Rhino, like this deck is really good at creating board stalls, and if you land a Siege Rhino, you don't really even need to attack with it. You just um, you just blink it a bunch of times and Lightning Helix the opponent's face. But it's two two different ways of doing kind of the same thing, and this is another reason I kind of came back to Bant, was that Hermit seems sort of equal with Rhino as far as finishing power uh, in my experience. It's relatively limited experience at this point. I haven't played Hermit for like months and months at this point, just like, you know, a, a two or three weeks maybe. Uh, but it just seems really strong. So if we can keep on with Bant and, and just not play four colors, seems good to me. Uh, at two drops, that's the one thing that this list is sort of going down on. It's just sticking with the snakes. Uh, I don't have any Charming Princes. I don't have any Watchers for tomorrow. Um, but honestly, with the five Mana Dorks, I want to max out those three drops, uh, and then at the hot, the top end, we just have Venser and and the uh, the Hermit sideboard. Uh, I've been re. Let me let me t uh, address your guys' uh, comments here. I haven't tried Once Upon a Time. Um, I know that Nasif was trying that a little bit in uh, in one of his recent lists, or maybe all of his recent lists. And I know some people on the Discord have been trying it, so. Um, Wanderer, Wanderer of Wastes, to uh, to answer your question. Let's see. Uh, I've been a fan of it in Bant lists. Helps you find a dark on turn one, uh, while never being a dead draw later on. Well, it can be a, kind of an awkward draw later on. Even while watching Nasif play uh, the card, it just wasn't always like a slam dunk. It's just, you know, people assume that Collected Company is always going to be amazing. And then, you know, you have Coco's where you just whiff, or Coco's where you just hit a Monodork or something. There's definitely... Um, you'll keep, like a zero land hand or one land hand and then get zero lands off of once upon a time and you'll feel pretty silly about it. So um, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that I don't feel super enticed to test it. I haven't seen like a uh, just a flood of results uh, with Soul Herder uh, running once upon a time. But if, there, if a few results uh, get posted, I'd be happy to try it out. Um, Glad to hear that you guys are trying different approaches and, and finding success with it. Um, so Exaxes, you're saying, um, seems like what can keep up with field? Maybe I was, oh, you're talking about Hermit. Yes, it can definitely race a, a field of the dead. Um, so, and uh, Prohibic 2000. The post Oko tech is really just to ferry Spell Queller. Uh, prevent the opponent from playing at instant speed, and then Spell Queller's effect is is basically permanent. Just steal any spell. Uh, it's super it's super powerful. Uh, I already um, I think I'll show you guys a quick replay just to show you guys the uh, the power of of uh, Spell Queller and Teferi, even if it's just the last game that I played. Um, before I do that though, I just want to touch on my sideboard. Um, it used to be all singletons or close to it, with with just like a couple cards that were two ofs or three ofs. The idea being that we draw so many cards in this deck, we're going to eventually hit something that we sideboard in, and then we can just use Witness to recur it. But um, the way that Soul Herder lines up against the field, you can really uh, just split up the metagame into pretty broad categories and then choose sideboard cards accordingly. Uh, so Celestial, well, that's not the best one to start with. I'd say Stonehorn Dignitary and Worship are the best ones to talk about first. They're really similar effects. Um, worship just basically says if you control a creature, damage that will reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. Uh, so basically the creature, the opponent's creatures become kind of meaningless uh, because if they, they can't attack us below one. Uh, Stonehorn, as, as I said, is a very similar effect, uh, but this just makes them skip their combat phase. So um, it should be pretty clear that uh, they're going to be better in different situations or worse in different situations. Worship, for example, is kind of the nuts against a deck like Burn. Uh, because if you have two or three creatures down, uh, you get to turn four, turn five, and land Worship. Um, it doesn't matter if you're at one life. They can't kill you anymore um, unless they kill the Worship. So even you can just cast as many one drops, two drops, three drops into an Eidolon of the Great Revel. And its trigger just doesn't do anything to you. Uh, it can't kill you. 
So Worship is insane against Burn. It's just kind of insane against any creature deck, um, except Infect. Uh, this says damage that would reduce your life total, and uh, Infect doesn't touch your life total. Infect just gives you poison counters. So obviously Worship not good against Infect, and Infect is uh, quite popular these days. So um, Stonehorn, on the other hand, does help against Infect because it just prevents them from attacking. Um, a downside of Stonehorn is that you kind of have to babysit uh, this card a little bit. You have to have blink effects on the board or in hand. You need to ephemerate it. You need to have spell, uh, Soul Herder out uh, to keep blinking it to, to um, keep the effect going. Now, obviously, you can get uh, an infinite loop going with Eternal Witness and Ephemerate to keep um, blinking Stonehorn. Uh, I've done that. It feels great. Uh, but Worship, worship is the... Uh, the lower maintenance of the two cards. You kind of land worship, and then as long as you have a creature or two, you should be good to go against a creature deck. Uh, but I do like the split of them. Stonehorn is really poor against burn. Um, it might make them miss a combat step or two. It might act as a reasonable blocker, but it is a four drop, and they're not really killing you with combat. Um, at a certain point, they're just throwing burn at your face. So um, worship definitely much better there. So these four cards in the sideboard are just uh, my catch-all against any deck that wants to get aggro with me. Like, if you're attacking me, I'm bringing in these four cards, probably. And if I draw any of them, you know, good luck winning, basically. Uh, Celestial Purge answers basically all the mid-range decks. Um, any Jund, any Rock, uh, any Grixis Shadow, any Sultai Shadow, whatever Shadow decks might creep up. Uh, this is going to exile... Um, it's going to exile your Death Shadows. It's going to exile Anglers. Uh, so they're not even getting those creatures back in their hand with, with like, Kolagon's Command. It's just exiling them. Uh, so at instant speed for two mana, it's it's incredibly powerful. It's going to exile against Jund. All their, any of their Planeswalkers, uh, it can exile uh, an attacking Raging Ravine. Uh, it can exile Tarmogoyf. No, not, not Tarmogoyf. It can exile Bloodbraid. Um, it, it, the list goes on. An important one is uh, Plague Engineer. Like a lot of these decks sideboard in Plague Engineer, often naming Snake against us, uh, so that we can't really even stick a Snake. We'll play it and it will just die immediately to uh, Plague Engineer. Celestial Purge is a clean answer uh, against Burn. Uh, gets rid of any of their creatures. Uh, it's pr it's a pretty awesome card. Uh, I started off with like one or two of them. Yeah, but um, Phobic. As far as babysitting creatures, um, we tend to just have a board full of creatures. Uh, so it's it's not often a concern. Uh, I have lost a game or two with a worship on the battlefield where I was just kind of barely, like I didn't draw enough creatures. Like maybe I just drew too much removal and I only had one creature and they were able to bolt it and then just steamroll me with, um, maybe it was against um, like Red Prowess, Mono Red Prowess. Like they drew a lot of burn. They were able to uh, kill the one or two creatures and then they ran me over. But uh, for the most part, like if you're playing against burn, um, if they start throwing burn at your creatures, you're generally going to be well off. It's just a strategy that's tried and true at this point. Like, I've, I've tested it plenty. Um, it doesn't really tend to involve a lot of babysitting. And we um, should say that we're better situated to play Worship than many other creature decks uh, because, first of all, we can ramp into it. Second of all, we have um, lots of ways to protect our creatures, right? We've got four Ephemerates. Um, we have instant speed creatures, so the opponent can think that they've dealt with our board, go for a big alpha attack into worship with no creatures on the board, and then just go ahead and flash in like two Kowattles. If they have one more extra bolt, maybe we can ephemerate the Kowattle. We have a lot of ways we can force the bolt, spell quell the bolt. Uh, we, we've got ways to make sure that uh, we'll have a creature on the battlefield when we need it. Uh, so anyhow, uh, these, these cards have uh, proven their worth. It's why I'm up to four of the effect, because um, it's just been better than any of the other sort of, you know, like Collector Oof. It does a great job, like one out of every 20 matches or something like that, uh, when I draw it as a singleton. But, you know, it's not like, I mean, there's a lot of Urza decks, but I don't see it that often, honestly. I don't know. Like, I know it's very popular. Um, so if you ran a Collector Oof or two, I couldn't blame you, but I'm just explaining my approach right now. So these guys uh, address the aggressive decks. This addresses the um, mid-range decks. We've got the Ceremonious Rejection partially for Artifact decks, partially for, mostly for Tron, I'd say. Disdainful Stroke for the Titans and for the, um, for the Tron decks, the Eldrazi decks. And Pithing Needle has been really impressing me. Um, it's possible that there are less Planeswalkers running around when, once Oko is banned now, um, but 
there's always going to be planeswalkers in the format uh, and a lot of other targets for Pithing Needles. So I, I've been enjoying that card a lot. So anyhow, before I actually jump into... Um, <laughs> before I actually jump into a replay... I uh, Sorry, uh, live match. I just want to show you guys uh, maybe just the last game of this, ga this uh, match against this bent uh, control deck. So I kept this. Double Ice Fang is pretty solid. Uh, it's like a Bant Snow Planeswalkers uh, deck. So they just played out two lands. This looks like... Uh, now, I've, I've seen their, um, their strategy in game one. This is game two. So I know they're looking to play um, Snakes. So with, with an Astrolabe out, second to Fairy, not the best draw there. Um, they're probably going to go for a Coatl here. And they do. And just so I don't play into like a Monoleak, I'm going to go ahead and get my Coatl out. Uh, drew another land. Nothing sensational, but the opponent sticks to fairy here. Tapping out, they could have a force of negation, which would kind of end the game really soon, I think, if I go for my own to fairy. So they tick up. Drew spell queller. It's uh, obviously much worse in the face of an opposing uh, to fairy. Play a land, get a forest, and I'm just going to go for my own to fairy here, and it resolves. So <laughs> looks very much like a mirror match at this point, but you guys know that. Um, my deck is likely quite a bit different than the opponent's. So they play their fourth land on curve, and they go for Jace the Mind Sculptor. So it is Planeswalker control. They get to start brainstorming. Uh, Teferi continues ticking up. Um, I drew a force for the turn, I believe. Um, I kind of clicked through that pretty quickly. Um, play an Ice Fang on my turn. I can't really do anything at instant speed. Uh, so I think I'm just going to use Teferi uh, to bounce my own Coatl. Uh, a pretty versatile uh, little guy this Teferi is. Uh, at a certain point I drew a Winds of Abandon, and um, I bounce the Ice Fang so that I can actually play two spells this turn. Not, just not a whole lot happening really fast with these two Teferis on the board. Um, I'm looking to draw into like a Pithing Needle at this point. Uh, Mateo, uh, as far as Revoker, uh, it comes up a lot in discussions, but... <clears throat> There's just a lot of removal in modern, right? People are just playing tons of pushes and bolts and and everything. Uh, anything that can, most decks have ways to kill creatures. It's not every deck that has a way to just straight up kill a pithing needle. And when I'm trying to um, stop something by naming it, <clears throat> I'd like that effect to stick around. And I don't really like having to babysit a revoker. I do enjoy Revoker um, in the right metagame in Merfolk because you can vial it in in response to the opponent casting a Planeswalker, but <clears throat> I think I've just liked Pithing Needle better. Our opponent's brainstorming. Uh, they Field of Ruined my Temple Garden. I'm going to replace it with a uh, Basic Planes, and they land Oko. They turn their Astrolabe into um, <clears throat> a 3-3. A feeling they're going to go after Teferi here, leaving back uh, a Coatl. Interesting. Going after Teferi, an easy choice just to block and kill uh, the Astrolabe. So at this point here, uh, looks like the opponent is ahead. I'm trying to draw into Pithing Needle um, to just slow down their Planeswalkers. Spell Queller's not grabbing anything. I've got a, a redundant Teferi in hand. Uh, <clears throat> I can play uh, an Eternal Witness to get a Force or an Ice Fang. Uh, obviously, Force not great with Teferi on the board. Uh, not a lot of creatures to, to wipe away with Winds of Abandon. So we're just kind of at an impasse at this moment. I'm going to play another uh, Coatl. There's um, another Dork. But I decided to run out the... Uh, well, I thought about running out Spell Queller, but I decided to attack first. Doesn't make much of a difference. Can't really do anything at instant speed anyway. And get out the Spell Queller just as another flying attacker. I thought maybe the opponent might trade with um, the Coatl before seeing um, the Spell Queller. And then I'd you know, have a, a bigger attacker post-combat, but they didn't take the bait. They returned my Spell Queller. Kind of an interesting move. Uh, they, have, they have a Death Touch blocker. Mm. They've got seven cards in hand. Um, Spell Queller could potentially be useful if I'm able to answer their Teferi. So, uh, Bouncing Spell Queller, I'm not sure. Uh, so they, they're going to path um, one of my Coatls. I get a land out of my deck, and they turn <clears throat> excuse me, they turn this Coatl into an Elk. 
So they get to get rid of my Teferi, which is pretty rough. <clears throat> Excuse me. Opponent's going to Brainstorm and definitely looking kind of behind the eight ball here. They crack a fetch, get a Temple Garden, play an Astrolabe, another Astrolabe, drawing cards, and they pass to me. So I'm going to start my turn by just casting the second Teferi in hand. Opponent with six cards currently. Uh, they cast a Kawaddle. That means that they're digging for a Counterspell. And Teferi resolves. So we're back to where we started. Uh, Teferi takes up. Played a Breeding Pool untapped, but I'm not sure that was the best play. Um, ultimately decided to go with Kawaddle here, which means that I probably could have... Well, I drew another Dork, so that kind of ended out, up not really mattering. All right, play out Birds of Paradise. This is definitely a deck that runs board wipes, so I don't want to, like, mega overextend. Um, these Teferis... Uh, I have to think the opponent is holding a significant amount of counter magic in hand. Still, again, digging for Pithing Needle. Opponent, Verdix. Um, I ran through that pretty quickly. Um, they get in at Teferi, uh, unable to answer him cleanly with their Astrolabe. Jace is going to Brainstorm. Opponent's on eight cards in hand. Uh, still on eight cards. They have to discard, and they discard a Field of Ruin. Uh, so I'm going to play this Eternal Witness. Opponent is tapped out. Get back a Kawaddle. There's not a whole lot better to get. just want to re uh, reestablish a bit of a board. Tick to ferry up, play Quaddle for like the 8 millionth time, play a Coiling Oracle. I could ephemerate any of these guys now if I wanted to, but I just drew into a Pithing Needle. So uh, the thing to name here is Oko, because the opponent's at a spot where they're just going to start making a ton of Elks. And Oko could also just Elkify uh, my Pithing Needle. Uh, Teferi could bounce the Pithing Needle, but um, it, does, it does let him uh, bounce an artifact, a creature, or an enchantment. So you remember that if you're playing um, Worship, although you probably wouldn't be playing it against a Teferi deck, uh, that Teferi can bounce Worship. Um, but he needs two more loyalty to ever uh, get close to sort of bouncing that thing. So it's a pretty nice rebuilding turn there. Uh, Eternal Witness doing a lot of work. Got back a Quaddle. The Quaddle drew into an Oracle. The Oracle drew into a Pithing Needle. The opponent's left with um, just kind of Jace adding value. I mean, they've got eight cards in hand. Okay, uh, so I think that they're both getting in at Teferi. Pretty easy choice just to let him eat one and uh, trade with Astrolabe. They're going to um, exile uh, the Eternal Witness. A little bit rough. I get my last basic. Cracking a Misty Rainforest. And for, I guess they're just thinning the deck. Playing out their Quaddle. And seven cards in their hand. I just drew into a Hierarch, which was actually pretty sensational in this spot. Uh, we've got Oko kind of handled here. Um, Teferi doesn't matter too much right now. Uh, Jace is semi-problematic. So what we can do here, pretty much all the cards in our hand matter. We can play out Hierarch, cast Wind to get rid of this uh, Kawaddle, attack for two, um, actually uh, kill Teferi. That's the plan, right? Kill Teferi so that Spell Queller is live. We still have our own Teferi. And then opponent just can't interact with uh, Spell Quellers and Ephemerate just countering everything. So that was actually an excellent draw, ripping that Noble Hierarch. Okay, so let's go ahead and just non-overload the Winds of Abandon. Uh, if I overloaded it, you can see it would be um, five, four more mana. One, two, three, four. I wouldn't have enough to cast a Spell Queller on the opponent's turn, and that's definitely something that I want to be able to do. So uh, not being able to interact with me at uh, instant speed, I just get to sort of kill Teferi here. Now I can play at instant speed, the opponent can't, and that was just um, a real crux of the matchup was whose Teferis were going to stick around longer. Okay, opponent goes for Cryptic Command, bouncing the Pithing Needle. And I guess the other mode was probably just draw a card, I guess. So I could have... Um, Potentially let that resolve and let them uh, do something with Oko, but I didn't really feel like that, so I'm going to try to spell quell this. I um, read from kind of a mile away that they have five mana left. They could very easily have a board wipe here, but I do have an ephemerate in hand to back up the spell queller. Opponent brainstorms, plays a field of ruin, and actually um, I think that they may have misplayed here. Um, now, when they pathed, uh, the Eternal Witness, I got a basic. So as far as the opponent knows, I still have basics left in the deck. But what they could have done was 
Field of Ruined, my Temple Garden, I could have floated white. Then they could have gone to their second main phase. I don't have a third basic planes. Um, I actually have no more basics in the deck. So if they Field of Ruined, the Temple Garden, go to second main, they could have resolved um, their Supreme Verdict. But it takes a pretty savvy player uh, to find that line. Opponent attacking uh, Teferi, that's sort of fine. Definitely not blocking with the Spell Queller. And here they go for the Verdict. All right, I get to Ephemerate uh, the Spell Queller. Doesn't matter how you stack stuff, Teferi's going to take care of everything we needed to take care of. The opponent can't cast their Cryptic Command. And I just eat a Supreme Verdict. I'm going to uh, cast this on the Oracle on the rebound. It draws us uh, into a land, which I just put on the battlefield. <laughs> Eternal Witness is going to get an Ephemerate uh, out of the graveyard, which just um, really going to help us lock things down here. So I tick Teferi up. I can attack with Exalted at Jace, and now their Planeswalkers are effectively sort of neutralized. Opponent, uh, thinking about what they want to do. Really the highlight of this uh, replay here is the interaction between Spell Queller and Teferi. It's quite strong. Okay, opponent goes for another Verdict. Um, I had a couple of choices here. Um, I could have chosen to go for Ephemerating Eternal Witness to get back a Kawaddle. <clears throat> and then on the flashback, sorry, on the uh, rebound, I could have flashed in Kawaddle and drawn another card. Uh, opponent wouldn't have been able to respond to that since I've got to ferry out. But it just seemed like um, the opponent had already um, cast one verdict. Another one is under Queller. This is a third. If I can deal with this one, I might just be able to get to the next turn with my creatures on board. This is the opponent's third Supreme Verdict. But it turned out they had a Snapcaster Mage into uh, Exaxi's Mana to be able to cast a fourth Verdict. <laughs> so board wiped. Uh, opponents tapped out. I need a good draw. And I hit to Fairy, which is not super amazing. Um, I had a choice here of um, using this to Fairy to bounce the Pithing Needle and use all of his loyalty to do that. I would draw a card. Let me use my Mana this turn. But imagine the opponent, out of all the cards he's been drawing and brainstorming with, uh, with, with Jace, he's got a Force of Negation in hand. If I get to my Teferi off the board, even for one play, uh, I could play another Teferi, and then they counter him with Force of Negation, and now I'm just naked and you know, no defense against anything they're doing. So I um, decided to tick Teferi up here, be a little bit patient. Next turn, I can start bouncing things with my Teferi so that I'll have some uh, sort of overlapping protection. This Teferi will be on the board protecting this one from counter spells. All right, so Jace resolves. Not much I can do about that. They brainstorm, and <clears throat> let's see if they have anything else. Looks like they do not, so they just pass through. Draw a dead card, but I used Teferi, as I mentioned, to bounce the Pithing Needle. That drew me into a, a Hermit, so this is actually going to be a pretty solid turn here. Play Pithing Needle back out immediately, name Oko. Um, go ahead and resolve on the second Teferi. I'm going to tick this uh, Teferi up, just because I don't really need to uh, bounce the Pithing Needle again right now. And play the Hermit. So uh, really nice uh, board presence all of a sudden. Uh, nine power on the board. Opponent just uses Field of Ruin. That's fine. Okay, they're going to Brainstorm again. And here we have, a, I think, literal fourth copy of, of Supreme Verdict. All three are in the uh, Exile Zone, and this one is being cast from hand. There's only 15 cards left in their deck. So, you know, clean answer to my... Uh, to my Squirrel Lord, rest in peace, getting rid of the Squirrel Lord, as well as everything else in my graveyard. We've got Teferi as an extra draw. There's an Oracle as another redraw. People who say that Oracle is a little bit underpowered, it's, it's a central part of the way that this deck functions. Uh, another Pithing Needle for Jace, that's pretty solid. Go ahead and uh, bounce the Coiling Oracle back to my hand, replay it, drew a Force. So things are getting pretty solid for us at this point. Uh, Path, I'm going to let that resolve. Uh, we've got more creatures in the deck. 
Ephemerate, not the best draw at this point, but it's definitely uh, one of the best cards in the deck, so it might come handy sooner or later. And remember, opponents, uh, Planeswalkers just can't do anything. Pithing Needle doing a great job. Okay, opponent plays a Snapcaster. They have to do it uh, main phase. And Click, Click is a pretty good draw here. So not going to attack, uh, just tick up to Fairy and pass. Um, let them go to their main phase. Didn't really need to do that. Um, on their end step, I'm going to click them. You see the opponent's definitely not going to win uh, this game and the next game, so things were pretty much wrapped up. They did let this resolve. I got to see their hand. And you can see what Teferi does against control decks. They've got a hand of four counter spells, and then the Pithing Needle's taking care of the other two guys in hand. So uh, at this point, the opponent just scooped after showing me their hand, and it was... um. Yeah, Bison, uh, that's that's a good call. I was actually going to remind uh, people in the Discord that you can bounce nothing. Um, I guess that's a good call. Uh, I didn't need to bounce a Pithing Needle, that's true. The only reason you'd want to bounce something of your own would be, um, I guess, something that actually does something good when it enters the battlefield. Like when I bounce the, the uh, Oracle back to my hand. Then I replay it. And I draw a card from Teferi, and I also draw a card from the, the uh, Coiling Oracle. So Bouncing Pithing Needle, thanks for pointing that out. I should have just left that and then bounced nothing. Um, interesting uh, to talk about that a little bit. Um, if you target nothing, uh, the opponent sort of can't count... <clears throat> excuse me. Opponent can't counter your card draw. But if you go to bounce something and it goes away... Like if the opponent, if you go to bounce your creature and the opponent kills your creature, you won't draw a card off of Teferi, I believe, because the effect, uh, the whole ability will just get countered. All right, so anyhow, um, that was just a really uh, exciting game uh, with really sweet interaction between uh, Teferi and Spellqueller. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, that was played with the list that I'm going to play tonight a little bit. It's getting a little bit late, so apart from that replay, I think maybe I'll just play one or two matches. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump into... I'm going to jump into a queue. I think Modern is probably going to be uh, super kind of Wild West for a little while, uh, post-bans. So go ahead and jump into a queue with Spell Herder, uh, waiting for an opponent. And in the meantime, we can go ahead and talk about the, uh, the list a little bit. So again, thanks very much for joining me uh, on the stream tonight, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, this deck costs just over 500 bucks right now as built. Uh, there are two sets of cards that contribute to two-thirds of that price. Uh, Teferi is about a third of the price. Three of these guys, they're $60 each. And then these four forces make up another third of the deck. Uh, these cards, the forces and the Teferis together are like almost $400, I think. Um, like 380 or 370 so unfortunately those are expensive but the rest of the deck is only like 100 or 200 bucks i did find an opponent here i think so or i don't know what happened oh here they are okay so i'm gonna go ahead and uh resize the window make sure that you guys can see everything that you need to see if any of you guys are not uh following me on twitch uh i encourage you to do that so that you get notified uh when i stream my regular streaming time is um Monday night, but I do jump in and do some streams uh, throughout the week when I have time. I won the die roll, so I'll play first. Uh, this hand is fine. It has a two drop. Uh, we're not ahead of the curve here, um, but as far as soul herder hands go, particularly on the play, this is a nice one. I don't have a second green for eternal witness yet, but it's not something that's going to be relevant in the first couple turns. All right, so usually I find this avatar means that the opponent is playing Tron. Let's see if that holds true. I'm going to play my Temple Garden tapped and just pass. Snow-covered island. Fun. Oh, well, maybe this is ninjas or something. That would be cool. Very Seer. You get to play against some cool stuff in queues. Uh, some people talk down about it, like, oh, it's not the, the utmost competitive level on Magic Online. Um, but when I'm playing a list that I want to tweak, like, all the time, opponent went, let's see, Fairy uh, is letting them scry two. They went one bottom, one top. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm tuning a deck, like, after every match, like I am now, I... Um, 
I don't want to lock myself into a league and play five matches with the same list. Um, so I've just been playing queues for the last day, uh, last day or two, particularly since the ban was announced. Well, that was pretty sweet. Um, I think I'm going to pass uh, to them and just sort of see what happens. I don't need to ephemerate right now. Um, I've said a lot on the Discord that uh, holding up ephemerate as like a counter spell uh, is just extremely powerful. So I tend to want to hold it as long as things are sort of seeming to work in my favor. Opponent is ninjutsuing, I think, and I get to path um, their ninja. It's pretty nice. So I might just go ahead and get... Well, I need some green anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get um, my second temple garden. So now I can play uh, Eternal Witness and get back uh, the path. Which seems pretty good. Oh, Disrupting Shoal. You got me, opponent. <laughs> Touché. Pitching uh, Siren Storm Tamer. All right. Well, uh, as I said, I can get back path and deal with this thing. Force is interesting. Uh, actually, um, this is an activated ability, right? So it's not... They can do this even with Teferi on the board. You guys got to see a pretty spicy match here, I think. So opponent's got five cards in hand, even after disrupting Shoal. Uh, so I, I, I just imagine I pretty much have to just play the Eternal Witness here. I do have my own force if they want to have like a counter battle. It's, we'll have to see what they do on their turn. Um, but we do have uh, the ephemerate loop sort of set up here. I don't think I'm going to upkeep path. All right, opponent's got a third land. Looks like mono blue. Mono blue ninjas. So I think I might as well just go for path here. I mean, what are they if they can? Um, could also just block and ephemerate, but they've got too much stuff going on. I'd rather just like keep things simple. Do this if they have an answer for it. Um, I can I can just go and get it back from the graveyard with ephemerate, even with um, force backup. All right, that resolves. Opponent with the mismatched lands, they've got uh, snow covered and on snow covered. I'd love to have island walk right now. Another fairy seer. And uh, I think that taps them out of blue for the turn. So unless I have another Disrupting Shoal and, a, and a, another 1-drop in hand, I'm going to be able to get this path back. They went bottom and top. Land is actually pretty solid here. Um, don't really like my attacks here, though we have to be a little bit careful. They do have flyers. And there's not a lot of life gain in this deck. So... Um, I think I am just going to go ahead and main phase this. Um, hmm. We play out to ferry. Bounce the siren. Uh, bounce the siren, right? Uh, with the ferry and then ephemerate and path. So here I can get anything I want basically, but I think I'll just get a basic forest. Teferi will protect me from any uh, disrupting shoals they might have, unless they disrupting shoal the Teferi. Which would be pretty rough. Okay, there we go. So now I can ephemerate... Uh, sorry, hang on a second. Let me see what I draw first. I 
Okay, just draw a land, nothing that exciting. Uh, ephemerate, the Eternal Witness. Although, now that I've got Teferi down, I can do this whenever I want. I don't have to just, I don't have to main phase it. Yeah, I think I'd rather let the opponent make a bunch of suboptimal plays. Oh, although, let's see, they're going to play out that, um, let's see, they're just going to attacks, so, okay. Uh, going at Teferi here, so I guess I might as well just do this now. They can't do anything at instant speed. Make sure I'm clicking the right things. And this will start our loop. So I feel like we're in a pretty good spot here. Just need to not fall too far behind on time since I'm doing uh, the live discussion thing. Currently, obviously, no blue cards in hand to pitch, but uh, next turn we'll have a uh, chance to draw another card. And we'll get to untap and actually uh, hold up force. So getting path here. Uh, ninja stuff or not. We're going to path this fairy seer. Now, yeah, I don't know. If they have a ninja and I go to path the... Um, well, it wasn't unblocked yet, right? It was like the beginning of combat. Point plays another flyer. Um... And just cast Brazen Borrower. So it looks like they're going to possibly just be able to deal with Teferi straight up. Um, I can get the path back. Actually, yeah, let's see. Target Eternal Witness. Get back the Ephemerate. Tick up Teferi. Misty Rainforest not helping us too much. Uh, let's see. So, unfortunately, well, I guess I can get rid of the Brazen Borrower now. I think I'll just try to do that. Not try, but just actually do it, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but again, I don't know. Um, they're tapped out right now from blue, so they can't sacrifice the Siren Storm Tamer. I think that's a good enough sort of excuse for doing this right now. And then we'll have force up on their turn. Now this does give them a nice attack with Mutavault. Um, I'll either have to let Teferi go I'm definitely not attacking here, <clears throat> or just trade the Eternal Witness, but that's obviously not going to happen. I'd sooner let Teferi fight it. Do we not wait so we can block Vault Ephem? Um, well, again, uh, I think part of the point was that um, they were tapped out of blue, and I didn't want to let them untap and then protect the... Um, the Brazen Borrower. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to cast this here. Curious Obsession uh, can get a little bit out of hand. Oh, opponent just scoops. That's pretty awesome. Uh, they, they, had a, they had a pretty solid attack here, but we were going to be able to keep recurring path. Um, so we got there. Pretty interesting matchup. So Pithing Needle can name um, Ninja of the Deep Hours since it is an activated ability. Purge does nothing. Disdainful Stroke does nothing. <clears throat> Seems like a deck that wants to win through combat. So maybe all four of these things probably want to come in. Also, these are four drops. It's going to be hard for them to counter them with something like Disrupting Shoal. Uh, Pithing Needle can name Mutavault. It can name um, Siren Storm Tamer can name, although they have Brazen Borrowers uh, that can bounce like a worship from the battlefield. 
But they're not really like a go wide kind of deck, so. Well, maybe they are. Maybe I just contained them that game. Uh, so, Pithing Needles, how good are they? We didn't see any Planeswalkers. But naming Ninja of the Deep Hour seems pretty good. Mono Blue, I don't know what other uh, ninjas they would be playing. <clears throat> Like, normally you'll see something like Sultai Ninjas, I think, um, because they run a bunch of, like, the blue and black ninjas that came, I think, in Modern Horizons. So I can cut a couple of forces at least. They're not that incredible. Click seems really nice as a flying blocker. Spell Queller seems awesome. Teferi seems awesome. They don't probably don't have a lot of removal, so if I get a Soul Herder on the board, it seems awesome. Paths were great. Winds is probably going to be great. Still like the ramp. I might just, since it's largely a creature-based deck, I might just trim all the forces. <clears throat> so all the forces out. Uh, all four of these in. And I don't know. A couple of pinning needles seems pretty good. Uh, eh, maybe not. Maybe it's just overkill. Don't want to overboard. <clears throat> now, of course, they can just start slamming Curious Possessions. Ah, oh, man, this is quite nice. Got it. <clears throat> okay. And no double blue yet, um, but we've we've got white, white and blue. Are we going to get ninjutsu here? I feel like the answer is yes. <laughs> Maybe let's see. All right, well they're tapping out. So they get to draw a card here. The fairy seems pretty solid. Uh, bounce their ninja. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I'll get to fairy down and then um, just start playing spell quellers. So we just really want to dodge disrupting shoal or I guess force. Let's see how it goes. Okay, um, I don't think we're in a terrible spot, uh, but that was pretty bad. Blue land uh, would be solid for Venser, for Vendillion Click. Opponent's going to continue to draw cards off the ninja for now. So they actually needed two specific cards in their hand uh, <clears throat> to be able to counter the Teferi. I think I was still correct in going for it. Mausoleum Wander gets to counter sorceries and instants. <clears throat> More little flyers. So I guess they are going wide, and uh, winds could be potentially pretty good. Uh, Stonehorn could also be pretty good. Uh, I am going to try to uh, block one of their flyers, I think, with a spell queller. Although, no, I'll probably just try to eat the, uh, the ninja. Of course, if they cast something for his main, I might just try to counter it. I could have another Disrupting Shoal in hand. This thing can counter, I think, anything, right? Yeah. We're hoping they have just like a Force of Negation in hand, and they can't counter this because it's not a non-creature spell. Eat this ninja right here. Maybe they ninjutsu in something else. It's kind of what the deck does. Well, we get to get Stonehorn down, provided I draw another land. All right. You got it, opponent. 
Still at 11 life. Uh, they brought the Mausoleum Wanderer back to their hand and I have a feeling they're probably just going to play that back out. And they do. So you do have a nice flying blocker here. Stabilizing. Well, that is uh, mana, but it's pretty slow. I think I'm still going to... Let's, I'm going to start with uh, this Oracle. Let's see. Um, definitely going to play this Hierarch this turn. Could also just play another Spell Queller. But I need to play Hierarch, so <clears throat> hopefully Oracle will just uh, hit a land here. There we go. And I could attack with Exalted, but I think I'm on defense for the time being. Probably just trying to eat this ninja again. And then next turn, uh, we can definitely go for Stonehorn. Slow things down, maybe draw an Ephemerate. But this is a pretty fun magic. I mean, you've got ninjas against Soul Herder. Snapback, huh? Return target creature to my hand. Okie dokie. And they could have like a mono leak or something, which would be really annoying if I try to uh, land Stonehorn. I don't think that I want to chump this ninja. I don't love letting them draw cards, but I do like letting them tap out. <clears throat> so maybe they draw something that they really want to cast. Bouncing Spell Queller is pretty, uh, pretty ballsy. All right, Liam, thanks very much for joining me. Um, my pleasure, and uh, hope to see you next time. So, so what is the opponent holding up here? <clears throat> we can play Oracle and then hold up Spell Queller again and probably still not die next turn. Um, if they have... Um, they could have Mystical Dispute or, um, or Monoleak. Could also just click on their turn. The Spell Queller seems fine. I like kind of trying to draw things out of their hand. They know I have the Spell Queller. So... Oh, that didn't work exactly how I wanted it to. Okay, we did hit a land. So now <laughs> things, things are extra interesting. I could play out Stonehorn with four mana or just hold up Venser or Spell Queller. So yeah, I think I just like passing here. Like if I do something on their turn, you know, I think I'll just probably... I'm not double blocking this ninja. I might, I might chump. I can get in for three here. That seems reasonable. I like doing something on the opponent's turn, force them to interact, and then hopefully tap out, and, and then I can play Stonehorn. Unimpeded. We still don't have any bounce. Uh, we still got four Ephemerates left in the deck. <clears throat> Two Soul Herders. I'm a few minutes behind the opponents on time, but it doesn't seem like we're, we're heading in that direction. Okay, opponent obviously knows that I've got a Spell Queller in hand. 
played this island, played this heath. <clears throat> Excuse me. They've got Mausoleum Wanderer for instants and sorceries, but um, uh, all right. Curious Obsession, whenever it deals combat damage to a player. It's going to draw another card. Interesting to put that on the ninja rather than one of the flyers. All right, so we try to blow out the ninja here. See how it goes, I guess. And again, it's, you know, if we get them to tap out on their turn, it's kind of a win for us. Uh, all right, so this guy's not unblockable, right? So now if they go ninjutsu, I'm going to play Stonehorn. I hope that they have, like, Mystical Dispute and can't cast it. All right, well, we've got three mana up here. Um, time to go for it. We've got um, actually seven here. So we can play Stonehorn and have Spell Queller Protection. Though Stonehorn only gets us one more turn here for the time being. All right, so they're not attacking next turn. Maybe we do the draw step click. Uh, I'll just do an end, end step click or just hold up Spell Queller. I think I'm still attacking here, obviously, since they can't attack. Opponent with the Disrupting Shoals, pretty annoying. <laughs> Sacrifice Curious Possession. That's a nice upside there. I could click myself, but I think I'll click the opponent, or at least try to. They could, of course, have another counter spell. They could just... Okay, there we go. Um, I kind of like the spell queller, so I'm not clicking myself. We only have one flyer. Oh, opponent just conceded. That's funny. <laughs> I mean, I'm at four life. Why would they just concede? Sometimes people don't... Um, well, so let's see. Corn on Jacob. You were saying that their play implied that they had more ninjutsu, right? Uh, but it looks like they didn't, right? They just um, kind of kind of made a weird choice there, right? Can you guys see the reason for putting Curious Obsession on um, <clears throat> on the ninja? I mean, adding Curious Obsession gave them five power on board. Anyhow, I, I don't know, because they have another Curious Obsession in hand and a Spell Stutter Sprite. Now, um, this encounters spells with um, CMC X or less, where X equals a number of fairies. So they would be able to counter um, up to a two drop. Obviously not Spell Quellers. Let's see if I could draw some cards still. MTGO will only let you draw extra cards like within the first like 15 seconds or something. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I just think it was a misplay. I think um, dude just kind of fell asleep. He was like, this is my card drawing creature. Let me put uh, Curious Obsession on him. Because, yeah, I don't really see the rationale, but uh, not just strapping that onto the flyers. That's why you play the flyers. I mean, I could see not putting it on Mausoleum Wanderer because maybe you're going to sacrifice the Mausoleum Wanderer. Um, Mausoleum Wanderer is actually quite a strong card, um, but in spirits against us because I've had... Um, I've had like Winds of Abandon in hand, uh, but just was unable to cast it because uh, opponent has Mausoleum Wanderer, and uh, even overloaded Winds of Abandon still only has a CMC of two. So even if you're paying six for it, uh, Mausoleum Wanderer, uh, sorry, this is not CMC. This is just unless I pay where it's equal to its power, and so... I just never got to a spot where I had like nine mana where I could cast overloaded winds and then pay three mana or something like that. Anyhow. Um, so DB Neil, the idea was I couldn't block with Spell Queller. Right, I did think about that when, he, when I saw that it was a 3-3 three, three, um, with Curious Obsession is that I just have no profitable blocks. Um, 
with the spell call there. That's that's a good point. Yeah, that's a, that's actually a great point. That explains it totally clearly. If uh, if they made a mausole uh, fairy miscreant or a mausoleum wander into a two two, I just eat it with the spell queller, and the curious obsession kind of goes away. Um, they just kind of force a chump lock. Uh, I know from trying, I've tried curious obsession in. Um, I think I tried a spirits deck with with curious obsession that either Rothgar or maybe both he and Stoneheart on the Merfolk Discord they were trying like spirits with curious obsession and so. I tried it, but it's a pretty tricky card. You saw I forced them to miss uh, their attack step, and Curious Obsession requires um, that you attack with a creature. So Stonehorn just got rid of that, which is just kind of a fun, fun little thing that you wouldn't necessarily think about. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that was a pretty sweet game. I love um, cool developmental decks like this. I love I love seeing them. I love playing against them. I love beating them. So uh, I, maybe I'll play one more match tonight. Uh, it's it's a pretty fun uh, build, I think, that we're working on here. So, got all you guys here with me. Is this the same guy that I just played against? I'd, I'd rather not play the same deck twice. Let me see if I can find his name. Uh, similar avatars, but different names. Mateo, uh, do you play? Do you play a lot of Popper? I've heard a lot about the format, a lot of good stuff, actually, all positive about the format, and it's one that I'd like to get into eventually. Opponent says, "Good luck, have fun." I say, "Hey, uh, good luck," or "Hey, same to you," I guess. <laughs> I won the die roll, and uh, yeah, this is pretty similar, I think, to the hand that we had. In game one of the last match, where I had turn two, two drop, no ramp, but uh, but decent cards, so I'm going to keep. Opponents mulliganing to six. Again, we've got a Tron avatar. So, um, Mateo, that's great to hear that you love Popper. It's it's good that there are you know so many popular formats in modern. It's just like kind of always keeps it fresh. Uh, I haven't played Pioneer too much. Oh, freaking Eldrazi. At least it's uh, Eldrazi, sorry, it's Eldrazi, potentially Eldrazi Tron, not regular Tron. We have a pretty reasonable matchup against Eldrazi. I just don't enjoy it very much. <clears throat> Pardon me. Spell Queller could be pretty good, but I have a feeling they just have another Eldrazi Temple and they're going to play a turn two Thought Not Seer. Uh, so in this spot, I think I'd like to ramp. So going to play out the Coiling Oracle. If it hits me a white source, I can path um, even like a turn two Thought Not Seer. Opponent's probably like licking their chops right now thinking that I'm just like some kind of garbage deck. Second Eldrazi Temple. I called it. <laughs> I called it. What is going on? I hate Eldrazi Temple. This card is so unfair. Why does this exist? Like, why isn't there a card that it called Human Temple, where it lets you make two white mana for humans? Ugh, four drop on turn two is ridiculous. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm getting salty. Ah. <clears throat> and not only does it take away my removal spell, it exiles it, so I can't get it back. All right, well, I've got instant speed stuff, so clearly that's, that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, to cast this guy, I would need an extra white source. I'm not casting Eternal Witness anytime soon. Could go get, like, green-white. That would cost three life. Just getting another white here seems fine. Or another blue. Probably another blue. I don't know. Ephemerates are sick in this matchup because you can just, like, ghost block all day. Throw your Coiling Oracle in front of him and then Ephemerate. Double Eldrazi Temple on a mulligan. Okay. Yeah, Elf Elfdrazi, exactly. Just one letter. Just one more letter, wizards. Alright, so maybe they'll go for another Thought Knot and I'll Spell Quell it and then they'll have a Dismember in hand.
Come on. You know you want to do it. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to take the bait, guys. I'm going to take it. Give me that matter reshaper. I want to draw another path to exile right now. That'd be awesome. Don't if he has a dis oh my god, he has a dismember. <laughs> ah, this is the most ridiculous mulligan uh to six. I mean it's still only mulligan to six, whatever, but it's just opponent with, with all the answers. Sweet Jesus. At least I can get the Spell Queller back with the Eternal Witness, but now the opponent's got so much pressure. Well, that does change things slightly. It actually kind of makes me want to go get another land, um, another land with um, Eternal Witness. And then just sort of hang on for dear life. The opponent might play a Matter Reshaper. Maybe I'll have to chump, but... Um, Favorite way of beat the deck is by disrupting their combo. Since they dig so hard, they have fewer cards in the deck. You just mill them out. Oh, I'm not even paying attention. Which deck are you guys talking about? I get you're probably talking about Popper or something. Um, I think I want it. Well, I can get a green and then get the Prismatic Vista and get just a basic planes. All right, I just need to dodge another Thought Not Seer for a minute. But if they had a Thought Not Seer, they could have played it last turn anyway. So let's just get the Vista back. All right, well, I've got a uh, Force up. If they've got, like, Karn or something. And then next turn, we've got a Hermit to stabilize. Oh my god, I'm gonna give this guy the middle finger right now. <laughs> oh, that's so unfair. He only has three lands. How is he casting all these four drops? Oh my god, guys. I'm getting salty. There's no way he's gonna have this luck. And he exiles it. Exiles it. <laughs> oh man. At least I'll have Death Touch with this Coatl. Uh I think I can still take my beats here for a minute. That is frustrating. Double thought not. Yeah, I'm not forcing that. I need my death touch right now. At least I didn't have another land, but... Oh my god. I drew a land anyway. I should have just gotten Spell Queller back. Um, yeah, playing this on my turn just seems fine. Quaddle's a good draw. Double Death Touch, kill both of these Thought Knots and draw two cards. It's pretty solid. Uh, I'll go, go get another uh, Shock Land. But the opponent knows I have the Vista. Whatever. Still can't attack. Opponent at 16. So if we come back from here, be pretty proud, I guess. Opponent's pretty priced into leaning in here. Only have the one Death Toucher. They might have another Dismember. No ephemerates yet, but that would be pretty awesome if I was able to rip one of those. Okay, looks like they're going to go get a land. <clears throat> Maybe another Eldrazi Temple, so they have all his dust online, but I have um, Force of Negation in hand. So maybe it's an... Oh god, it's not... Oh my god. Alright, so this the per for them to have the perfect game, they need now to... All right, you know what? I'm going to, um, I can still get a Temple Garden. Play a Coatl, draw a path. I don't even know. It's like, getting another Eldrazi Temple, I feel like they have all his dust in hand. So they have three, d triple Thought Knot starting on turn two, and they have an all his dust in hand. So I'm, I'm clearly going to play this Coatl here. Ugh, and he gets to take away my soul herder. But then I guess I get to uh, force his his all his dust. He's probably gonna take force. And if he had, takes okay, he took soul herder. So that probably means they don't have force. Do they attack with everything here? 
just matter reshaper. Interesting. I mean, I don't have... <laughs> uh, matter reshaper is actually kind of solid here. If I draw into my singleton wins, that would be the best, the best draw possible. Um, I'll have just enough mana to cast it. Um, they have removal for any of my creatures next turn, and I don't block here. No, I still die next turn if that works, if that happens. So, um... I think I just take this for now. I'm in a pretty bad position, but um, I don't need to take all day. Um, all right. Go get green-white. This will put me down to one. So come on, Winds of Abandon. Mm. <laughs> Triple Thought Knot from turn two. Pretty bonkers. My opponent knows I have the Vista. We make unfavorable uh, blocks, but if they do get in with these Thought Knots, I do get to draw a couple cards, I guess. All right, well, I mean, that's reasonable. I can just block. I'm just going to chump with this uh, Hierarch, I think. Don't really need the extra mana right now. Uh, Endbringer, huh? Um, so I guess I'm just going to go down to one. I know they can ping me if they untap with this thing, but my only out here is the, um, that thing. Mm. Yeah, this can just destroy me. So now I, I have six mana. I think I'm just dead. <laughs> oh. Maybe I can draw a path and at least deal with their Endbringer. Not just going to give up against this garbage. All right, now I give up because I'm dead on board. So that was wild. You guys got to see Eldrazi Tron just have the absolute nuts. End on, end on a mulligan. Um, what did I just do? Okay, so they win. Let's do some sideboarding. I think all of this stuff is pretty good. Stainful Stroke is pretty good. <laughs> I think Pithing Needle is pretty good. They've got a bunch of Planeswalkers. Uh, they also have Endbringer. They have Walking Ballista. Um, they have <laughs> Ceremonious Rejection is pretty insane. don't know if I need like 100 million cards to bring in, but these are definitely the contenders. Um, don't know that I need all four of these. It's not like a crazy all-out aggro deck. So let's start trimming some stuff. Uh, Force is actually pretty good against their deck, though it looked pretty terrible there. Um, if I bring in Needle, it answers some of their non-creature spells, but they definitely are going to have access to things like uh, All This Dust. So some number of Forces is, is important. Uh, Teferi is not great. Spell Queller is reasonable. Not the first cut. Uh, click is pretty good. It dies to Ballista pretty easily, but that's an early name uh, with Needle. You can also just name Expedition Map. Winds of Abandon is pretty solid. Got to cut eight cards. Um, so we, we also have extra, um, extra counters, so you can easily trim two forces, if not more. Always uh, reluctant to trim um, the two drops in this build in particular because I only have eight of them and they're, they perform kind of a, a pretty vital role in getting the deck sort of started. Uh, it's a deck that doesn't run a ton of removal, so getting a Soul Herder on board 
uh, can be pretty solid. Um, Spell Queller without Teferi is a little bit worse, so I can trim one of those. Um, I'm going to trim at least one more Force. Venser is really good. Maybe just two Pithing Needles instead of three. Um, I think I'll just go the Worship route here instead of Stonehorn. Still need to trim one card. I'm bringing in a lot of stuff. Um, uh, I don't know. I like ramping against these guys, but I, I wouldn't cut Noble Hierarch, I don't think. Yeah, but we play them for a reason. I can trim one of my dorks, I guess. I guess, since all the other cards are pretty good. I don't like being in a hole against Eldrazi Tron. Um, I don't really like being in a hole against any deck. Um... This hand is just too nutty to not keep. Um, normally, on the play with one land Hierarch, I would ship. If the opponent has exactly land Dismember, I get pretty wrecked. Um, but double Disdainful Stroke. Kawaddle is an extra draw as long as they don't kill my Noble Hierarch right away. Willing to take a slightly, um, slightly risky keep here. Seeing Tron Mulligan, as they tend to do. All right, let's go. No dismember for one turn, please. I ask for that, and then, of course, it's just going to happen right away. Come on, opponent. All right. <laughs> Rarely been so happy uh, to see an expedition map. Play this guy on my turn because I really want to draw lands, obviously, right? Okay, didn't hit it, but uh, we do have some mana. We're going to be able to hold up counter spells. Mm, if they have Dismember now, though, that's going to be pretty good. Set them back a turn, cracking Expedition Map, but I think they go for Tron over anything else here. So you're currently seeing me get punished. But we'll see how it goes. I could also just ephemerate the Noble Hierarch now that um, they've let me untap. All right. There's this tower, it is. Um, so now we get to see why I kept this hand. We play a big fatty, I let it resolve and path it. Um, ephemerate the Kawadal. A huge ballista. I can dig it. I am tapped out. They have one mana left for Dismember, which would be pretty solid. Doesn't look like they have it. Uh, okay, of course we can path our own Ice Fang if we want to, but with Tron Online, we kind of are priced into keeping up Counter Magic. All right, our um, window of opportunity is rapidly closing. I could be greedy and ephemerate right now to try to draw a land. Question is, what are the odds I hit a land? What are the odds that I get wrecked if I don't hit a land? I think I have to pass. Last zone. Not bad. I say, uh, hang on a second. And what do they even take from this hand? Just take whatever, whatever they want to take. Uh, they still have four mana left here. They can go, um, 
Let's just resolve and path this guy. Draws me another card. Maybe they take Disdainful Stroke. I've got one in the graveyard already. Um, I kind of like just pathing this thing. I could take Disdainful Stroke. That's a totally reasonable option. But I just really want to rip lands, and this is another, this is a redraw here, so. Oh, man. All right. Well, opponent had the nuts in game one. Not the super nuts in game two, but I kept a risky hand, and I'm getting punished. I've now drawn six cards after my opening seven and haven't hit a single land. You know what? I should have cast Ephemerate here. Um, I didn't really want to give him the option of taking it away. They do have a lot of good cards to choose from. Uh, I kind of hope that they whiff. i uh, sorry, that they kind of don't use Ephemerate. Because I'd love to get two more card draws off of uh, Ice Fang. And we're pretty far behind, and this Blast Zone is super rough. But Worship is pretty good. If we get to live for another turn or two. Opponent's thinking really, really hard. Okay, they took Soul Herder, which is kind of funny, huh? Out of all the bomb cards in our hand, they took Soul Herder. But they might have another Thought Not Seer here, which makes it sort of irrelevant. Um, don't play Ballista. Don't, don't, okay, hang on. <laughs> that's, that's totally fine. Totally fine. There we go. All right. Now we just need to get a path. All right, there's, there's the lands. So we do have to hold up Disdainful Stroke here. Blast Zone is obnoxious. Uh... Cost three, right? Three and tap, so that's just their tower, and they're gonna have five, at least five mana beyond that. Um. So, do I even bother playing out a hierarch here? I think maybe I just play. Ugh, I, I can't imagine not leaving up to stainful stroke. If they want to cast, well, I don't have any. Maybe I just price them into getting rid of the Blast Zone. Uh, if they take a significant portion of their turn off to just kill two, two Noble Hierarchs, I need to use my mana. Um, hmm. Maybe not. Maybe I just go and get Path right now. Just play. But I can't, I can't. I have to leave up uh, Disdainful Stroke. Okay, um, let's, let's play. I could also just click them on their draw step. That seems solid. Um, but if they have two big plays, really is not good for us. Un untap and slam worship. Um, but only if Hierarch lives, right? Yeah, I think I'll just go for click. It's kind of proactive. Gets creatures on the board for worship. I need to also think a little bit about my time. All right, so this is a bit shields down here. Dismembering click, not the best, I guess. I mean, it's, it's sort of fine, right? It doesn't really matter. 
Um, all right, so Chalice on whatever is sort of fine. Um, Endbringer is not really fine. Karn is still playing uh, Mycosynth Lattice, which is stupid. Um, they have a no lands in hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can't play Mycosynth yet, and then I get to leave up Disdainful Stroke, Worship. Puts things down a little bit. Endbringer pings me, but it does damage. It can kill creatures. That's problematic, right? Um, yeah, this was kind of rough, but they could have resolved more than one spell this turn anyway. Um, I think I have to ship Endbringer. It's like the biggest threat, I guess. You guys can tell me how, how wrong I was there. We just fell way behind in this game. All right, well, they drew a map. That's kind of annoying. So maybe they can Karn and Lattice now, which is basically banned. Or they can Chalice on four or something. All right, you got it, opponent. Oh, Walking Ballista. That's fun. <laughs> All right. So now we play Witness. Oh, they're going to kill Noble Hierarch. If they let me go to my main phase, that's pretty sick. Come on. Let me go to my main phase. Please. No. No. All right, so let's just brush up on what this thing does. I think we're dead to Mycosynth Lattice pretty much. Um, all right, let's let him play the broken combo and end the game. Pretty annoying. Ah, this is frustrating. I think I want to play another match after this. It's just opponent with the nuts, me not doing anything. Uh, do I try to ephemerate this thing and see if I can draw the walking ballista ping? Let me let me attack first. I I have it. I find it hard to believe that um they would take this kind of bait here. Sort of pointless attacking Karn, I guess. Yeah, they're not going to give up their ballista. Uh, so now I guess I'm looking for. I don't even know. I guess uh, I have Disdainful Stroke, so I can stop the uh, combo, but they can just load up on this Ballista here, which is terrible for us. I guess I might as well go for this now, see if I can draw draw it out. I don't know that they know that I have a second Disdainful Stroke in hand. They didn't, didn't take it. Another good draw, but we're in a massive hole right now. I promise, guys, we have a pretty reasonable, um, pretty reasonable Eldrazi Tron matchup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we know they have a Chalice of the Void in hand. You got it, opponent. Oh man, <laughs> guy, he's getting too big. If I draw a land, green land, I can path the walking ballista. All right, they've got me effectively at, uh, what, eight, a four? I, I need something right now. I guess a green land, like a basic forest would be fine. Still not really a great position for us, but. Uh, 
All right, you got it, opponent. Path off the top works. The right land off the top works. White land, green land. Witness for land. No, but I need path. I need to witness for path. <laughs> oh, I had a rebound. That's unfortunate. All right. Well, at least we can get rid of the ballista. It puts us down to four. Or three is probably going to kill the, uh, the witness, I'd imagine. Um, I don't want to let him untap because he can just load up and just shoot me with the ballista. So just do it now. I, I, I guess he can just go get the lattice though, right? And just close things out. Yeah, but if you're saying witness for land on this turn, I can't play two witnesses in one turn. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding. Did the opponent did not shoot me with the ballista? Or did they? I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, oh, no, they did. They did. I was just answering your question, I guess. All right, well, that'll do it. Good game, opponent. Things just didn't line up very well that, that game. Um, that match, I should say. All right, let's jump in one more time. Do best of three. Um, and I think I might run to the bathroom here. Make my opponent just wait a second. Hey, just a second. Be right back. I'll see you guys in one second. All right, what are you guys talking about? Top deck or witness land so you could witness path instead of gambling the draw. Uh, yeah, anyhow, uh, <laughs> opponent drew a reality smasher. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, all right, so I won the die roll again. I'm getting pretty lucky with that. Um, only two lands. Uh, we've got a removal spell. And a two drop. I mean, it's a little bit rough, but I think I have to keep this, right? Okay, opponent kept seven. I think I think what uh, Phobic is saying is maybe I should have played Witness the turn before. So this looks like it might be uh, Shadow particularly with this avatar. Looking at, they looked at the top of my deck, which is a strange play on turn one. <clears throat> Usually they look at their own top card. Now if they thought seize me and take Ice Fang, that's kind of annoying, but we've got pretty good cards in hand against Shadow. It doesn't look like it's Shadow after all. Unless it's the one with uh, Ranger Captain. What do they do? What? 
Oh, they're naming like a land? Don't name Windswept Heath, please. Don't do it. Don't name Windswept Heath. Okay. Oof. Well, so we've probably got a Misty on, on our side of the board. I can bounce that thing with uh, Teferi when the time comes. That's bold. What a, what a, what a turn one play. All right, so now we run that thing out. Faux show. Sure. Um, no idea what we're playing against here. Basic green seems okay. Mm, not really, because if we draw another forest, we can't play our white-blue spells. So since it seems kind of a controly deck, I think I'll just go ahead and get another Shockland. Like a Temple Garden. And we'll play this Coiling Oracle that the opponent knows about. So this is going to be the, uh, the, last, the last match of the evening. Ephemerate. All right, so now the opponent legit knows what I'm on. That is currently the only spell that they know about in my hand. They went with Misty Rainforest Blind. What are we going to see here? Uh, returning a creature to my hand. Um, or just sacrifice a draw card. Some kind of artifact strategy. So land here would be sick. Didn't get it. Uh, but I still have an Ice Fang, which is still pretty good. Now, since I want to draw land, I think I'll probably main phase the Ice Fang. Could also Ephemerate, but I think I'm just going to Ice Fang right now. We've got Force for the opponent's turn. Are they going to Mystical Dispute me or something? All right, well, these draws uh, con are continuing from... I've got the combo here. I really don't want to pitch one of them to Force, but I may have to if they go for their own Teferi here or something. Ah, well, this is, this is definitely something we can deal with. Adder Skull costs 5 to play, right? And I can also just counter it. And there's a path. That's a nice one. So I am going to probably path on their upkeep. Continuing to not draw lands. I think I might just want to ephemerate. Mm, it's tempting. But if they have a path in hand and I go to ephemerate now, I can't force or anything like that, so... Um, and I'd rather not path now, it gives them a land, they play a fifth, they get to play a fifth land, and just play Batter Skull out. Yeah, I mean, I could play Teferi and bounce it the following turn. Seems reasonable, but I don't have a third land yet. Uh, at this point, pathing one of my guys seems like, um, a reasonable choice. I think the better play is just to path this thing on their upkeep, ephemerate one of my creatures, hopefully draw a land. I have eight cards in hand, though, right now. Giving them a fifth land doesn't really... Mm, I guess it does, but then I can just counter the batter skull. I think I'll do that. I do have to pitch one of my blue cards, which I don't like. I don't love. But being able to force batter skull it, it makes, it makes this a more palatable decision. I also get to attack for one more. Okay, opponent, oh, a pause on upkeep. Yeah. There's that fifth land. Okay, just passing. Interesting. Uh, I think I continue to not go for ephemerate here. Oh my god, deck. Well, that gives me a better thing to pitch to force, I think. Uh, I'm not going to attack in with... A Coiling Oracle? Maybe I do? I don't know. Maybe I should. If they want to trade with a Snapcaster, it sort of seems fine.
And I'm just going to pass and probably just bin Eternal Witness? What are they doing? Just uh, their own? Oh, I can't counter this. It's unfortunate. Put it onto the battlefield. Ah, uh, all right. A phobic. I definitely wasn't purposefully waiting uh, on on top decking a land when I could have made a different play. Uh, I think what you're saying is I should have played out a witness, gotten a land. I'm pretty sure I did something significant on the. Uh, the previous turn that used one of my lands preventing me from like did i use a path that turn I, I i know i had three lands and i tapped one of them the point is that um if i just played out witnesses the opponent could just ping them down with ballista um i wasn't going to be able to play a witness get a land play another witness and get a path right away so they were going to get to pump up the ballista and and in the end i don't think the sequencing really made that big of a, a difference, particularly since the opponent just got at me with a reality smasher. Sword of the Meek. All right, you guys are distracting me. <laughs> so now they're going to play uh, Thopter Foundry. I'm going to try to counter it. They're going to counter back, and we'll see how it goes. All right, well, maybe they have another Thopter Foundry. Maybe not. I think I'm just going to go for Ephemerate now. Like, I'm getting pretty sick and tired of waiting. Um, <laughs> although, I don't know. <sighs> Let's do it. All right. Could have put it onto the battlefield if I did Coiling Oracle. That was a, that was an opportunity. I think that uh, so I think I'll just blink this thing now. Would have been better to uh, have targeted the Oracle there. It was a little bit hasty in just uh, clicking the Ice Fang. The fact that the opponent seemed to be kind of f sixing there. Maybe they're just going to go for um. I can't spell Quell um. But I can bounce one of their artifacts back to their hand. Um, can't spell quell um, were for two. I feel like it's going to be a hard matchup. I can uh, I can try to eternal witness for a force, but they could just spell. They can just go for the were in response. And I can't use Force on my turn anyway. Um, all right, well, so we just play Teferi. See how it goes. I don't think this is going to end very well. Um, oh, resolves. So uh, maybe, maybe I just bounce the sword for now? <laughs> I don't even know what I want to do. I didn't expect it to resolve. Um, Just slow them down a touch? Draw a card? Alright, well that's a land. What do I have that can deal with their combo? Not a lot, it's just um, if they get it online, it's going to be rough, I think. We can start spell quelling next turn. Let's make this construct. I'll have a healthy life total. One with all these snow lands is probably playing uh, Kowatl, so this could be representing that. Uh, 
All right, uh, that is the sword from hand. And if they get both pieces down with Urza out, I think it's just uh, infinite now, right? So... Aha, equipping. All right. So we're going to lean on Spell Queller at this point. Um, we've got green, green, white, white. We need some blue. Um, and that's, that's about it. So um, getting Death Touch would be reasonably nice. So maybe I'll just get basic blue. Take up to Fairy. I cannot activate that Misty Rainforest, so let's be quite careful about it. Maybe um, lure them in with um, no death touch and then let the death touch happen. Uh, oh, you know what? I can win um, Urza right now. Kind of like that. And then hold up uh, Spell Queller. One more land and I'd be able to wipe all their board, but um, Urza is just a little bit too scary, I think. So um, I can cast it on their turn, though, which is pretty sick. Um, I don't really see a reason to do that, though. I can also uh, go Witness Path, but um, then I won't have mana uh, to hold up Spell Queller. So I think I'm just going to um, Path. The Urza. Now this is going to chill in the graveyard where I can get it back with Eternal Witness. Um, and I think I'm just going to Death Touch block the Construct. So that's kind of all I've got here. Um, I might want to get in with the uh, Coiling Oracle. We can keep looping wins, uh, in theory, uh, to, to keep killing all of their Thopter tokens, but once they get the combo online, they can just gain like 8 life per turn. So I'm, I'm not sure that we can uh, outpace that. This definitely resolves. Do not care about that. Be nice to spell quell like another Urza or something like that. Or a uh, Thopter Foundry or a Whirr. Opponent can't do anything at instant speed since we have Teferi on the board. I'd love to close this game out pretty quickly uh, since they, they just potentially inch closer and closer to their combo each turn. Something like uh, an Ephemerate would be awesome. So next turn, if I spell quell one important spell this turn, go to my turn uh, without them doing anything, I can just grab the Ephemerate and then I can just start Ephemerating Spell Queller, uh, which should be able to just uh, keep eating all their spells. But let's see what they've got to work with this turn. Uh, all right, well, I cannot target that with um, Spell Queller, so that's going to be okie dokie, I guess. Um, man, that kind of stinks because I'd love to be able to quell something this turn. Uh, so this turn I can just Death Touch block and then witness back the Ice Fang Quaddle. Oh, they just passed. That's kind of sick. So now maybe I just get Spell Queller on the board and then witness back and Ephemerate. Seems fine. Opponent can't do anything right now. Um... Because I've got my Teferi. Uh, so three cards in hand, and they didn't equip Sword of the Meek, which makes me think maybe they were trying to hold something up, but that doesn't really work. Oh my god. Oh, I thought I messed up my mana. I was about to have a heart attack. <laughs> I'm actually feeling sort of decent about this spot now. Um, 
I can't do anything against uh, the Pithing Needle right now, so with this Misty Rainforest, but there's no reason not to play it other than just not giving them the satisfaction. Let's see how I tap here. It's green. Green. Blue. I'm just ephemerating this turn, basically. I can't, I can't crack the Misty Rainforest, so I can't do... I can't cast the Coiling Oracle and hold up Ephemerate. Yeah, just get Ephemerate. All right, well, once again, uh, getting to see a bit of Spell Queller and Teferi Synergy. Soon I might be able to bounce this, this Spithing Needle, um, actually do something. Um, opponent's probably going to get in with their stuff next turn. We're probably going to have to do some chump blocking. Or not chumping, I can trade, hopefully, with the Ice Fang. Um, opponent knows I have the Ephemerate, but there's not a lot they can do about it. Not sure if they really understand. I mean, the, the Queller to Fairy interaction is a little bit niche. Uh, I could, of course, also just Ephemerate the Witness to get back Winds of Abandon and then just sort of clear their board out. We're, we're, we're going to be able to loop this Ephemerate, hopefully, for a little while. But they are going to gain life from this Batter Skull. Uh, maybe I will block... I don't even know what I want to block. I think I'll block the, the, the Construct. Maybe not. not even, does the opponent attack here? So it's actually a little bit misleading. It looks like I have access to 6 mana, but I don't uh, because of the, the Pithing Needle. All right, getting in with both at Teferi. Um, I could just do Death Touch and then block and Ephemerate so they don't gain life, but then, of course, they can resolve something nice next turn. Um, but if it's a creature, I can path it. Um, I kind of like just chumping um, the Batter Skull and holding, holding the Ephemerate up. Let's see. All right. So, you know, we've got Witness, so we can, we can get back these creatures if we want them at some point. Reestablish Death Touch. Have to play kind of fast. I'm falling behind doing all the commentary. Do have another Teferi in hand as well. So I guess we'll probably want to bring in... Okay. Well, opponent's going big here, and I can't... Unfortunately, I can't really interact with this, I don't think. Um, but I can ephemerate... So what are they getting here? Interesting. Well, it's beyond Spell Queller's range. Okay, um, so now I think I kind of want to, let's see, I can get a land, hmm, bounce, this is, this is what I was worried about, is, um, maybe I bounce the Thopter Foundry with Teferi and then replay Teferi, um, that seems okay, I guess, they can make some Thopters, though, on my turn, um, can get a force, like bounce this and get a force. They can then they're stuck just making like four thopters. Um, I 
This pithing needle actually did a little bit of work against me. Um, yeah, I'm right. Uh, Soul Herder is kind of a good one. Um, but yeah, I want to hold up force. I can do that with any of these creatures. Um, bounce the Thopter Foundry and see how they respond. I, I can't I can't spend too much time thinking about every single decision. That does turn on any counter magic they might be running. Uh, oh, could I have gotten force for Whir? Did they do it? They did it on their turn. Did I miss that? If so, that would have been poor, and thanks for um, catching it, if that's the case. I think they did do it on their turn, and I could have, I, I, I could totally have gotten that. I am I guess it's late in the day. It's almost midnight where I am, so apologies for poor, poor play. Um, opponent making the Thopters, and yeah, I'm just falling behind from where I should be, I guess. This shouldn't be happening if I if I had gotten the force. I was so focused on spell queller. Um, I guess once I get a little bit more used to spell queller, it gets a little bit more normal. I won't be so uh, hypnotized. I guess. Opponent got a watery grave. Definitely should have gotten force. Didn't even occur to me. Pretty ridiculous. And I'm playing against a combo deck, not a non-creature based combo deck, and forces kind of the nuts. Did they sacrifice their their pithing needle? I, I can crack my land now. Um, okay, I don't think I'm going to be attacking. I'm uh, starting to fade, guys. So I'm going to play Soul Herder. Play another Teferi, I guess. Seems okay. They can equip this to a flyer next turn, which is kind of annoying. Um, no, I think leaving Ephemerate up for the time being is okay. Just go to the end step. And now I think Winds is actually a good card to get back. Uh... And I should remember I can crack this Misty Rainforest. Uh, double Force, Double Pitch. I can actually also just hard cast when it's looking at my top card. Uh, I'd like to Ephemerate. Okay, what are they doing here? Got, okay.
So we'll have double force, double pitch. Opponent lets it resolve. I'm gonna get Ice Fang. I can actually play that. Sorry if I'm being a little bit quiet now, guys. Um, running low on time, trying to concentrate. All right. Um, Full herder starting to get big. I don't really want to tap out here. Um, do I have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six? I don't have um, force backup on my turn. So let's reestablish. To ferry, still hold up force. And currently, I have I have two to pitch here, um, but I can get a card back from the graveyard anyway. End step. Uh, Cryptic Command, I think maybe I answer that with Spell Queller. This is getting kind of intense. <laughs> The main problem here is that I'm pretty far behind on time. Uh, what is going on here? Um, oh. If they have their own force, this would be a pretty sick stack right now. All right, so resolving uh, to ferry gets the combo going with Spell Queller. It's pretty nice. Um, let's see. I'm tapped out. I uh, can just eat the... Uh, I still think I don't really want to attack here. Still have a force in hand. Oh, you know what? Oh, this is ridiculous. Uh, I should have bounced something with Teferi. Could have attacked with, with my big guy. Um, as it stands, I think, uh, I think I will attack. Yeah, why not? Let's get frisky. I'm getting tired. Uh, oh, wait, does this thing have... It doesn't have Death Touch. I was getting worried for a second. Um, all right, so what do we do here? Um, I don't know. Return the uh, the batter skull, I guess. Draw a card. Man, I'm just not going to be able to win a second game. It's kind of a bummer. So maybe I'll just stop talking and, and just focus now.
Uh, I think I'm going to lose my Teferi here, which is a bummer because it makes him makes Spell Queller. Um, but then I could just win on the Crackback, I think. All right, so I think I've got this one, hopefully, unless the opponent has another Cryptic in hand, which would be pretty rough. But, yeah, I guess they're going to kill Teferi here. I, I hate that, but it is what it is. We'll see what they've got. Oh, they didn't. They didn't do anything. That's awesome. So, yeah, now it's, it's GG because I can just wipe their board. All right, well, that was a fun game. I am not going to cast this because I don't need to. Well, you guys get to see the rare um, Winds of Abandoned Soul Herder <laughs> Overkill win. So those of you guys who stuck around until the end of the stream, you're, you're being rewarded with, with, the, with the rare Soul Herder win. <laughs> Imagine if I actually countered the, uh, the last Sword of the Meek when I should have. Probably would still have like four extra minutes on my clock. All right, Soul Herder, take us home. Six minutes. All right, pedal to the metal. Just go aggro in the next game. I bet you guys didn't think I was going to win that one. I had faith, though. So um, what are we doing against these guys? Obviously, Pithing Needle is pretty good. Obviously. Um, now, Thopter Foundry is actually a blue-black spell, so it can't be countered by Ceremonious Rejection. They do have a lot of other spells that can be countered by this spell, like uh, Engineered Explosives, Pithing Needle, etc. Um, Disdainful Stroke hits Urza, hits Big Wurz. We might want that, but actually we've got these forces, so the forces were pretty sick this game. Against a combo deck, we keep in click. The Teferi Spell Queller interaction looked beautiful. They don't have a lot of removal, so Soul, Soul Herd was amazing. Uh, we can cut... I mean, Urza is obnoxious, so I kind of want to keep some paths... Uh, so, but I can trim two of them and leave in winds and a single path. Um, any suggestions, guys? Maybe Disdainful Stroke is worth it, but I can't play a long countery game. I can talk with you guys right now, but head down when, uh, when it's time to play. need creatures, so I'm not boarding out any creatures. I like my ramp. Need, need to uh, save on time here. Uh, Teferi seem pretty awesome. They are playing um, Cryptic Command. They might bring in other sideboard spells, counter spells like uh, Mystic, Mystical Dispute. So not cutting creatures, which means I probably shouldn't bring in too much, because I can't cut too much. Uh, Ephemerate, not getting cut. Um... You have to win, so Pithing Needle, what is it name? Name Sopter Foundry, obviously. Um, but if they get to that point, the game's probably over anyway. Um, Venter's not really a beater. He's more of a controlling card. Um, so maybe I trim a Venter. Uh, um, Mono Blue is not going to have a lot of graveyard hate. Purge kills Stopter Foundry. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to bring this in. Um, I don't have time to win with Worship, unfortunately. So I will trim A Force and. Uh, two Forces. Let's go. Two Forces for two uh, rejections, and I'm just going to play super fast. I could win this matchup, but I just got too low on time. I guess I'll use the excuse of um, doing live commentary. Though it's, oh my god, this is a great hand. I'm not sure if it wins super fast. Definitely slamming turn two to fairy, bouncing whatever they play on turn one. I've got a variety of fetch lands, so they can't shut me off with the Pithing Needle.
That was a good draw. That was a good draw. Don't care about my life total up front here. Could have held up rejection here, but obviously uh, I, I need to win. So need to ramp to Hermit. Hope that the opponent is light on lands. Okay, you got it, opponent. Maybe they're naming Teferi. To be reasonable. They did. I could play Witness now, get my beatdown going. Actually, I think I still want to play Teferi. Oh, but I can't activate him, can I? I guess it just pre prevents them from playing at instant speed. Um, maybe it's not that important. Uh, I guess I'll just play um, Eternal Witness. Get a body down, get back a land so I have five mana to play my, my Hermit on time. Could have held up, again, rejection, but um, we'll get to that, I guess. Okay. Um, getting back Flooded Strand is cool because, well, anyhow, it's not that cool. They've got a Flooded Strand too, but they can crack it right now. Hermit could close this game out real fast. Now, let's let, hope the opponent doesn't get to Cryptic Mana. That would be pretty awesome. Next turn, I can play Teferi and Hierarch, something. Um, expect they're just going to play like Urza next turn. What's going on? Okay, there we go. System was like freezing. Okay, can't activate it. That's sort of fine. I'm now going to hold up rejection. We've got five mana next turn. Hopefully they don't have cryptic. If they just keep holding up mana, it's sort of okay. If they play Urza, it's kind of obnoxious. But it does tap them out. Let's me play Hermit. Okay, returning this to my hand. Um, and drawing a card. Okay, all right, guys. This is our time to shine here. <laughs> Deep Forest Hermit. Get there. Uh, the opponent could have a board wipe, but uh, mm, we've got some stuff to rebuild with, I guess. No forces in hand. If it's going to be anything, it'll probably be Verdict. Ugh. All right, guys, so I think it's Verdict, and I think we're going to have to rebuild. Um, I have to play fast. Another Hierarch would be pretty good. Okay. Well, we had a good shot. Not sure why the opponent bounced my Teferi. That was kind of weird. My dude just uh, is sitting in the graveyard, so another Eternal Witness would be pretty nice. Well, okay, that's kind of obnoxious. But they are pretty low on life. You know what? Hang on a sec. Just let that resolve.
Ah, oh, they had the verdict. I did my best. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have no time, so let's ephemerate now. Not the best play, but whatever. Okay, can't cast click. When it knows I have it, it's kind of annoying, but it's a flying way to win. We know that they have a verdict on top of the deck, and they just drew it. I doubt that they want to use it just yet. They can activate to ferry this turn. Looks like they might want to do that now. Let's see how it goes. They still have verdict up. Uh, not anymore, though. Okay, War of Invention. I think that is kind of a nombo here. Oh, they cast it for zero. That's fine. I could have countered that, I guess, right? Oh, no, I couldn't have. Opponent knows I have this click. It's a little bit annoying because they can wait uh, to cast it. They can get another Urza activation here. Um... Just an artifact. I can. Oh, uh, Mystic Sanctuary. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I hate that card. We know they have a verdict in hand. They've got another War of Invention. We can click if they let us untap. Opponent's not super far away from equalizing on time. Batter Skull, get wrecked. Can't really attack here. Need to leave back my Death Toucher. Uh, I can attack if I path this thing. kind of like doing that. <laughs> uh, we're going to draw step, click them. Uh, we're also going to flash in a Quaddle. I have another basic island in the deck. They do have a verdict in hand, so actually I'm not going to click them on the draw step. I'm going to unclick that here. We know they have a whir in hand. We have, I think I took my Vencer out. Um, which is pretty annoying. Okay. I'm gonna let that resolve, or let it go through since it doesn't kill uh, Teferi anyway. Flash in four power of attackers on end step. Uh, it's four, five, six, eh, pretty close, but not enough. Let me go, opponent, pass to me, please. Are they gonna verdict, or are they not going to verdict? Probably gonna whir for something good. You know what? Maybe I should have clicked. I don't know. I need the power to, to beat them down and win. But if they go get, like, ensnaring bridge, it's pretty rough. Okay, you got it. I can't do anything about it. They still have Verdict up. Oh, they're getting their combo. That's kind of terrible. Um, oh, except now I can almost win. Um... Definitely playing this thing. Definitely. Um, yep. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I guess we chump with Hierarch. I believe we know they have the verdict in hand. They can sacrifice and make Thopters. Oh, that's terrible. Um, but they can only sacrifice two things right now to make Thopters. This, this Pithing Needle is pretty annoying. Are they going to Verdict right now? I guess they would, right? Um, okay. And now, I guess I still hold on to click for a little bit. Hierarch is mm, sort of reasonable, but they stuck. I, I don't know. I don't know what to think here. Let's draw step click. I'm going to let the bobble resolve. Actually, I'm not, because I don't want them to be able to make another Thopter right now. Honestly, it's uh, that important. They can make one Thopter here with, with uh, the bobble. I need a good draw here. Let's go, uh, like, oh, they sacked the bobble. That was a good draw. All right, guys. I'm pretty close. I might have overextended there, actually. No reason to play out the second witness, I think. If they draw into a verdict here or a snapcaster, I'm putting myself dead to top decks again, which is ridiculous. Why did I do, why did I do that? I don't know. Oh my god, they're ridiculous. Well, can they win in one minute? I don't know if they can. They've shown themselves to be pretty slow. I'm getting it. Uh, I can't cast Ephemerate, which is terrible. They just passed without attacking. How silly. Can't cast this. Oh my god.
they didn't make any thopters. Why didn't they make any thopters? I think I got it, guys. I think I won this somehow. Oh, man. We got it. Three seconds left on their clock. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, was, I was behind four minutes on the clock, I think. Well, quite an adventure tonight with uh, with the new build. So it's a different deck, right? It plays plays very differently with Teferi in there. Oh my god, that was, that was pretty exciting for me. I think. Oh. Let's uh, let's open that up again. I mean, if I play a little bit faster without you know uh, while doing the commentary in, in the first game, could have had more time. Probably could have played a little bit more optimally. I, I, I'm not sure I made every single decision correctly. I, certainly in game one, I mean, even while doing the commentary, I just forgot to force the first Thopter Foundry. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Peter Hone, uh, I haven't seen you at the stream before, so welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Um, same to Phobic. Uh, you guys, I guess, are, are new to the stream and love seeing uh, new folks tuning in uh, to, watch, to watch the stream. Uh, I think the last time I streamed, I played Merfolk. Uh, it's my first love in modern. Uh, I go by Merfolk Joe. You can see M Joe over here. Um, actually, I've uh, I've played a ton of Soul Herder now. Almost certainly over a thousand matches. Uh, you know, you lose count at a certain point. But um, at a at a certain point in my development as a player, I I realized you can go into um, modern open play i think and then create if for those of you guys who haven't um done this before modern open play or really any format i guess well the, the format you want to test uh make it one player and you can create your own local game and then um you know you can just jam uh you can just jam turns with uh soul herder and get used to the triggers for example i mapped yes and no uh, to hotkeys so that every single time Eternal Witness asks me if I do want to get something from the graveyard, I say yes. I can just do that by pressing one. If I want to say no, this is weird, but I have uh, five mapped. So I'm going to keep this hand. And, uh, you know, there's a soul herder so I can show you guys, you know, how we um, operate. It just goes right back to me. And then um, I'll just play a soul herder here. But just developing chops with the deck because there are so many triggers, you know? So knowing how to click and um, do you go to the end step, I just say okay, say yes, and then just F6 basically. So now it's my turn again. Um, so I mean, I'm not really do trying to do too much here, just show you guys um, how, how to just operate smoothly with the deck. Mapping hotkeys can really help save time. So even though I wasted a lot of time in the first uh, the first game, I was able to make it up with, with tight play in the second, knowing my hotkeys, knowing my shortcuts. So, knowing how to stack everything, hitting F6 when appropriate. So, uh, for those of you guys thinking about picking this deck up, it can be um, hugely beneficial uh, to, to put in some reps like this. Um, you know, seeing how quickly you, know, you can resolve everything how to stack stuff, knowing what, what land you have. Um, like you see, that Temple Garden just came in basically tapped like instantaneously because I hit five as, as that was my key for no. Um, so yes, uh, Phobic, let's go ahead. I just, after showing you guys the open play here, which again is at the, um, it's in the modern, I scroll to the bottom and it's, um, kind of stuck here, open play. And then you just create a room with one player 
And yeah, just just do it for half an hour. Um, go through like a hundred soul herder triggers. Uh, so the deck list here is uh, new as of today. Um, if you if you want to join the um, soul herder Discord for some of you guys who uh, aren't on there yet, uh, there's pins at the top of the main channel. And I actually pinned this list. I'm calling it uh, Spell Herder for the time being, uh, named after Spell Queller. But effectively, I just increased the dorks by one uh, to increase the chance of getting three mana on turn two because uh, Spell Queller on turn two is pretty sick. Uh, same for same for Teferi. Whereas before, you know, we were running Oko. That was like a slam dunk uh, turn two play with with ramp. The rest of the three drops weren't that compelling to get down on turn two, like Eternal Witness and Soul Herder. It's not like you're dying to get them down on turn two. Um, but these spells really encourage us at this point uh, to get that dork in the opening seven. So I've got five dorks. Uh, I'm on three, 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 sorry, three, three, and three for the Witnesses, Spell Quellers, and Teferis. I trim Soul Herder to one, uh, down by one from three. To squeeze a click into the list, it's another card that's kind of high impact on turn two if you're playing against like an amulet deck or something or a Tron deck. Clicking them on turn two, uh, take away, I don't know what you want to take away, whatever the best thing in their hand is, um, seems pretty solid. So again, if you go to the Discord server, um, you'll be able to find this list there. Um, and if you don't know how to get to the discord server how can i get you there um anyhow if you guys if you guys need a link to the discord uh just let me know right now in the chat and i will try to hook you up with that um, otherwise you can find me through the merfolk uh discord i'm there all the time i'm sure that's how you guys are hearing about me um about my stream because those are the only two discords that i participate in um, so before I wrap things up i see there's a few of you still tuned in uh do you have any questions or comments about the sideboard um, or the main deck, mana base, uh, force of negations, winds of abandon. Um, always love hearing your guys' thoughts. Um, actually, it was somebody in the Discord, uh, I think earlier today, that brought, or maybe even yesterday, just bringing up Spell Queller again. And I hadn't thought about it in a while. I had definitely um, planned on increasing my number of Teferis uh, with Oko gone. But of course, the synergy is just kind of backbreaking. Uh, so. Uh, I'm pretty happy to be playing this combo. I, I've been enjoying it so far. All right. Seems like there's not too many questions. So um, thanks so much again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, please follow my Twitch stream. Uh, it'll it'll alert you when I'm going to go live. Um, if not before then, it'll be next Monday evening again. And since I'm pretty psyched uh, ap after Oko getting banned on just testing this new Soul Herder list, uh, I'll be, probably be playing more of this deck, and I might jump into a league, might not. Uh, I guess it just depends on how testing goes uh, over the next few days. Uh, modern leagues are probably just going to be kind of a mess in the next few days. There might just be a lot of people playing Burn to capitalize on sort of a metagame in flux, and Burn just wins kind of no matter what. Um, okay, Phobic, you say, how do you handle graveyard hate? Uh, it's a great question, and um, the answer really is that if the opponent is taking their turn to play uh, like a graveyard hate spell like Rest in Peace or Ashiok or Relic of Progenitus, most often they're not playing something else that could be furthering their plan. And if you look at the deck list, um, we're not hit extremely hard by graveyard hate. We've got three Eternal Witnesses, and that's kind of it. I mean, Ephemerate... Yeah, it's a kind of a combo with Eternal Witness, and it's it's a very strong part of the deck. But I win. I don't want I don't want to say like more than half of my games, but around half of my games, not by establishing any kind of loop. Um, but sometimes, like I'll just play Venser, and then I'll have a Soul Herder on the board, and Venser will bounce a land. Soul Herder will let him bounce another land, and then I'll cast an Ephemerator too, and the opponent just like goes back to zero lands. Um, another way is just play a, play a Hermit and blink it once or twice, again, with Soul Herder or with Ephemerate. Now you've got over 20 power on the board. Uh, if the opponent doesn't have a board wipe immediately, they just lose. So um, long story short, um, Graveyard Hate is reasonable against us, and I think that people should bring in a couple of 
graveyard hate spells. I wouldn't bring in more than two, though, I think. Uh, like, if you've got four rest in peace in your in your sideboard, I wouldn't bring in four rest in peace against Soul Herder. Uh, I think it's just overkill, because you're going to draw redundant uh, rest in peace, and uh, and they're just going to kind of be dead. We don't really... You don't need it that badly. I guess the question is, how do you beat Soul Herder? And graveyard hate... Is is an angle of attack against us, but but it's it's not the strongest. I think the best way to try to beat us is to know which pieces to remove and when. And since our lists are constantly in flux, uh, particularly post banning, um, it can be hard to know that. I played against I think Eldrazi Tron earlier in this. Played against somebody earlier in this uh, stream, I think, where or maybe it was just a match before the stream, but somebody had a choice. Of basically every good card, I think it was against, yeah, it was Thought Not against Eldrazi Tron. They had a choice between every good card in my deck, basically, and they took the Soul Herder. Uh, even when I didn't have enough mana to even cast it, they took the Soul Herder. Um, when Ephemerate would have just been the, the, the obvious choice uh, in my hand, it was the only spell I could have cast. It was the spell that was going to get me to lands. I was just uh, land screwed at that point. So. I guess the point is, um, we're pretty resilient in general. Since Ephemerate is one mana, very easy to cast, instant speed, it's actually, it's actually the much better blink spell uh, than Soul Herder. It's, I've said this before, but for those of you guys who are just tuning in for the first time, Ephemerate is the best card in the deck. Uh, when Nasif was starting to play it and he wrote a primer on the deck uh, for Channel Fireball, he called this card the glue that holds the deck together. Um, I'm sure some of you guys listening have played Soul Herder and are familiar with the power of Ephemerate, but it's really kind of the nuts. And so if you're going to attack us, like surgically extracting Ephemerate is pretty strong. That takes away like a lot of our value. Then we're just playing stupid like Coinling Oracles and Ice Fang Coatles. We're not ghost blocking anymore. That's a big line for us against aggressive decks is throwing a Coiling Oracle in front of a Thought Knot Seer, and then just ephemerating it, we get to draw a card, we, uh, we basically blank four points of damage, and then we get the rebound from the ephemerate, so that ephemerate synergy is really strong, so people looking to um, hose Soul Herder would do well to try to figure out, like, in a sense, we're kind of a combo deck, ephemerate being so strong, so even bringing in something like Unmoored Ego and naming ephemerate, or even just something like Surgical Extraction would be pretty solid, I'd say. But in general, graveyard hate as a strategy is not backbreaking uh, for Soul Herder. So, um, yeah, I mean the engine, the the recursion engine is based on is based on the graveyard for sure. But um, you know we've got a bunch of flying creatures between Kawadal, Click, Spell Queller. Um, so we're going to be able to get in with evasion, uh, particularly you know noble hierarch making our flyers bigger. Um, Deep forest hermit goes super broad, super wide, uh, really fast. So shutting off our access to our graveyard is just not often going to just outright win the game. Uh, there was a situation I can remember; it was actually on stream against Merfolk, where I got down a Stonehorn dignitary uh, with Eternal Witness. And the ephemerate loop. So I was just literally blanking their attack step every single turn. And I think I was going to be able to win uh, relatively soon, maybe like with Exalted in the air or something. But the opponent ripped... Um, they ripped Relic of Progenitus. Like they top decked it exactly like on that turn and cracked it right away. The ephemerate went away and then they got to attack with Island Walk and they won. So... It does happen where like a timely piece of graveyard hate will interrupt a critical loop that we have established. But more often than not, the loop is just like getting some value across three or four turns. They find a rest in peace and land it. And by, by that point, like we're six cards ahead, you know, um, having blinked Coiling Oracle or Kawadal or any of those guys a whole bunch of times, gotten back, you know, a handful of counter spells or removal spells. So Again, I'd, I'd recommend that people bring in Graveyard Hate, but if you overload on it, uh, you might find yourself regretting it, I guess. So I don't know. I, I, hope, I hope that kind of answers your question. So uh, it's after midnight now. Again, I thank you guys very much for, uh, for joining me. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you again next week or the next time I stream, and uh, I guess I'll see you there. Have a good night. Bye.